All right, guys, in this video, we're going to go over the directory structure and file system structure of a Linux computer. And it's worth mentioning when I say file system, um, I'm referring to the method that a hard drive was formatted. For example, most Windows PCs, um, hard drives are formatted in FAT32, and Linux supports various different file systems. Uh, with the usual being ext4, but there's also ext3, there's also um, glusterfs, there's uh, zfs, there's many different file systems, but your average Linux user is probably going to have ext4. All right, so let's hop into it. Let's get to the directory structure. So it's worth mentioning the highest level of the directory structure, where everything starts, is this root directory. All the other directories live inside the root directory. And remember in Linux, every single aspect of the operating system is represented by a file or a directory. Even all the hardware you plug in from your monitor to your keyboard, everything rep is represented by a file on the operating system. So anyways, the root, uh, the highest level here, root, with all the other directories under it, not to be confused with the root user. Um, it's called slash, but it's easier just to call it root. So that's why we call it the root, because it's the root of the file system. Then you have the boot directory. And this is where um, all the system files, including the kernel and the files needed for the operating system to boot, such as the uh, bootloader, everything's located here. Um, slash bin is where the binaries uh, live. Binaries are compiled programs that uh, users are able to run. Slash dev is where all your device files live. Um, and uh, device files and drivers are, as I mentioned, everything, every piece of hardware is represented by a file. So all those files that represent your hardware will live here in slash dev. Slash etsy. Is very important that's where all the configuration files live as well as startup and shutdown scripts slash home is where the user home directories live for example my user cam has a directory under slash home and it's worth mentioning whenever you open a terminal your terminal will start you in your user's home directory moving right along we have slash lib these are where the shared libraries and kernel modules live and libraries are, they're kind of like uh, DLL files in Windows. Um, they're basically libraries that are needed for programs to be compiled and some applications to run. Lost and found is where the system places unknown files. Slash media is a mount point for removable media. Uh, for example, a CD-ROM drive might show up here or a USB drive might show up here. Slash mount is a mount point for temporary file systems. For example, say if you wanted to mount something temporarily like a NFS file system or a Samba file system, this would be your ideal place to mount it. Slash opt is the optional software packages directory. Uh, depending on the type of third-party software you're installing, it might want to create a directory under slash opt. Moving right along, uh, sbin, are where it's very similar to uh, slash bin, um, but these are where the system-specific binaries live. We'll get a little more into that later. And you have slash srv or slash server. This is uh, data for services provided by the system. And then you have slash temp, which is a temporary storage space. A lot of programs will create temporary files and they'll store them here. And this is a directory that gets cleared out whenever you reboot your system. Uh, moving right along, we have slash USR. A lot of people think this stands for user, but it actually stands for Unix system resources. And this is where you'll have You'll have um, Unix uh, libraries, you'll have uh, special binaries, um, you'll even sometimes have documentation that's stored in here. 
we can maybe get into the specifics of what really lives in this directory, maybe in a later video. And then moving right along, we have slash var. And this is um, variable data used by the system. You will have uh, information about processes in slash run. You will have lock files um, in slash, uh, slash var slash lock. And a lock file is sometimes uh, applications need to create a lock file to make sure it's only one version of itself running or to lock a specific file. And you also have slash var slash log where the system keeps its log files. And then you will have a slash var slash temp where long-term uh, large temporary files that are created by applications live. So moving right along, I will show you what this looks like in the terminal. Here I used a, um, a terminal application called tree just to show what the root tree looks like in my system. You see we have slash here, or root, bin, boot, CD-ROM, Oh, CD-ROM's not in my example, so uh, my operating system, instead of putting uh, the CD-ROM drive in slash media CD-ROM, it just has slash CD-ROM. And that's back for when computers used to have CD-ROMs. Uh, slash dev, slash Etsy. And then we have um, the kernel image here, which is an actual link to a file that lives in that boot directory. Um, and this is the old kernel here, right here. Um, I upgraded to a later version of the kernel, but uh, the operating system keeps a older version around just in case you need to revert. Slash lib and slash lib32 and lib64. Those are still just libraries, but they're libraries for 64-bit systems and 32-bit systems. The lost and found directory, as we mentioned, media, MNT, opt, proc, and so on. And then uh, just to give you an overview of what a home directory looks like, I will cd into my home directory. And these are where the files and directories that I've created as my user live. And it's worth mentioning all the, all these other directories outside of home, your typical user does not have access to write to them. The user can read them most of the time, but he cannot write them or create anything in these directories. Your typical user can only create stuff within his home, his own home directory and then the, uh, the temp directories. So this is a basic overview of the Linux file system. I hope you enjoyed and we'll move on to our next video. Thank you.